We're now in Lake Bohemia, nearing the end of our tour of Slovenia. Time to look back over a few video highlights, starting with a curious corner of the capital, Ljubljana. This is the former barrack block complex in downtown Ljubljana, used for about a hundred years by the army as barracks up until about 1990. And then the Ljubljanans, or at least a group of them, uh, wanted to take it over for their own use, but there was quite a lot of resistance. So they ended up uh, squatting in these various old barracks and establishing alternative cultures here. Now the area is rather bohemian, a little bit creepy. Um, you can come here for you know, the bars and such like at night, but I'm um, quite happy being here at broad daylight, but I don't think I would necessarily want to come here for the night light. And if there are more people around, I'd be keeping my bum bag even more closely to me than it is now. Bit sort of weird, bit sort of steampunky, really. And look at those real, really spooky looking grotesques. It was extremely hot for our first day in Ljubljana with the temperatures up in the 30s but conditions had changed somewhat by the following evening. Is there a space on the I think space if there was, they'd be calling us in. My leg is floating! <laughs> Now we're off to the Postoinia Caves. This is a cave complex so huge that your first 10 minutes of exploring it um, takes place in a train. So fasten your seatbelts, let's go. We quite enjoyed the caves, but by golly, they were busy. In fact, they're the busiest cave complex in Europe, attracting 7,000 people per day. Much quieter are the remains of various First World War fortifications in the Bovec Valley. And here's a compilation of clips from three of them that we visited and explored, mainly by torchlight. In the First World War, Austria and Hungary were fighting Italy. Italy was in that direction, and so they built these bunkers for gun emplacements overlooking the Soka Valley, through which the Italians might come on an attack. This building here was once a dormitory for 40 men in this whole sort of trenched complex. I don't know which way we're going now. I think that might be, that could possibly be, be a latrine, not quite sure.
This um, square chamber was a gun emplacement. You can see where the gun would have poked out over the Socha Valley. And then that was connected via another stone trench to a second gun emplacement in that chamber. And again, you can just see the light coming through the window through which the gun would have been pointed. And we're heading through a little door down there. So we're now at the entrance to one of the bunkers and we're going to go in and have a little look around. Follow me. This is a pile of old nails and tools and such like and bones as well from when the men in the Austro-Hungarian army were stationed here. And here comes the intrepid explorer himself out of the murk. Looking very confident with it. And into the sunlight. Oh, he wants to check out more bunkers. He can't wait to get out, I can't blame him really. Quite spooky. And that brings us out of the entrance of bunker number one. Welcome to Fort Herman, another part of the First World War defences on the Socha Valley. This one was built in 1900 um, and destroyed only 15 late years later in a blizzard of Italian artillery. This isn't actually the fort, this is, I think, the tunnel leading to the fort. And so we'll catch up with you when we get a little bit closer to that after the plan that I believe we've got in front of us. The Italians shelled this position with 3,840 grenades. Only 200 hit the target, so they weren't very good shots. But it must have been very good grenades because they destroyed the fortifications. And we'll go and have a look inside them right now. We're now going to descend into uh, the three uh, galleries that were cut into the side of the rock just below the fort, um, mainly for machine guns. Uh, they used to have about 80,000 rounds of ammunition here, which would be enough if you were firing continually to keep you going for 100 minutes. So we get on.
journey to the light at the end of the tunnel. And out we pop. And to finish this tour of the Great War in the Bovetch Basin, I've come to what's called the Ravelnik Open Air Museum, which includes various structures, some restored, which were occupied by soldiers in that war. A little cabin here includes an impression of the bunk beds that they might have slept in, and an office with a lovely view. The only shooting that goes on down the Socha River these days is down the rapids. Here we are doing some white water rafting. I'm at the back of the boat on the right, Polly's in front of me and Bertie's in front of her. From war to peace and the peace of Virginia. We finish this film with some clips of bathing and boating on the lake sent to the music of the Slovene National Anthem just as established in 1991 following the country's independence from the former Yugoslavia. So with that for now as they say in these parts, Nasvidenje. Great fun, don't you, Bert? Mm -hmm. Here we are, rowing on Lake Bohemia. Beautiful day, absolute paradise. This is what holidays are all about. With the church of St Nicholas behind us. And a lovely afternoon with a bit of swimming in prospect. Keep going. Good. Good.